check this out so there's there's the uh, off-road lights there's gonna be the pod lights and there's that awesome ox bean look at that man that's the LED light bar isn't that crazy Hey guys, Robert here with Coastal GX. Today we're gonna to be doing a product review video. Normally I don't do these, but hey, once in a while, there's a really cool product out there that, I mean, I think I can use. So you're gonna notice that most of the mods on my vehicle, there's a purpose behind it. Today, it's gonna to be this switch panel, eight gang switch panel by one of my favorite companies, Oxbeam. They put out all sorts of products, usually involving lights. They were gracious enough to send me this eight gang multifunction switch panel right here. And what this does, it's going to consolidate all of those wires, all right, that are going into my dashboard. And it's all gonna be concentrated with this one thing right here. That means all the wires are gonna to go to a fuse panel and only one single wire is gonna go into the cabin. Let's open this up and let's take a look at what it comes with. Okay guys, I've gone ahead and opened it up right here and uh, let's take a look at what it's coming with. Okay, so got these really cool stickers. It's got some instructions and take a look at this. It's got this, this thing right here. It's uh, these little stickers that are gonna go on the switch panel itself. And they have all sorts of little indicators that you can use to identify what the buttons are going to turn on and off. Of course, it comes with some nice instructions. Let me see here. This is the panel itself. Look at this thing. Really neat. Okay, very slim, and man, it's nice. I, this is better than I expected. I thought this was gonna be like plasticky and stuff like that, but man, it's got this nice aluminum housing, and from what I understand, it's also waterproof. That's pretty neat. Man, buttons feel pretty high quality. All right, so this is gonna be the one, the one thing that's going to go inside the cabin. It also comes with, there's a meat and potatoes of it right here. This is gonna be the switch assembly. The switch assembly is gonna be the part that's gonna go inside of the engine bay. The actual switch panel itself comes with its own switch bracket system, this little bracket system right here. And it comes with everything that you're gonna need, all the wires, pretty much the hardware, everything you expect it also comes with this circuit breaker. Got the circuit breaker right here. All right, it's a 60 amp circuit breaker. That's also gonna go inside of the engine bay. Here's a bracket. Now, check this out. This is what's really cool about this. They really put in a lot of thought into their uh, kit. This is uh, powder coated. It's got a very nice, robust feel to it. But it all depends on your vehicle, so you can have different options. Of course, we're gonna be installing this on our GX460 on Sandy, you know, so I'm probably gonna to have to configure some sort of way of, you know, putting it in there. Uh, I've already been coached by my very best buddy, Gabriel, up in El Paso. He's got a, a, a Lexus as well, and he already installed one on his. Look, you know. The cables are going to go in through here. So I have my front lights, okay? I have my big off-road lights that I want to connect. I have my ditch lights. I have my Midland radio that I need to connect as well. I've always wanted to hardwire it. With this thing, I'm going to just send it over to the switch panel, to the fuse panel inside of the engine bay. On the driver's side, I'm going to have that uh, awesome... Um, uh, light bar from Oxbeam as well. And so, man, Sandy's gonna have no shortage of any light sources, I'll tell you that. 
Okay guys, so what I wanted to do is kind of give you guys a layout of where the wires are and where the major components are to kind of make it a little easier to explain before I get to assembling things. I'm not the best DIY guy in the world, but you know, I'm gonna give it a good old try and uh, I think we can make this happen. Let me go ahead and show you. So what I have here, all right, we have the switch assembly right there. And from the switch assembly, let me go ahead and remove this because I didn't show you guys this, but it comes with some extra, extra fuses and even a little clip to remove fuses if you need to. And we probably will have to. And of course, as you can see, they all have different fuses. You know, you got five, 10, you know, 20 and the whole works right there. So if you see this, there's a positive and a negative uh, little channel right here. And that's going to be for each of the eight uh, sources. All right. So depending on the type of uh, power that you need for each individual source or light source or whatever, or accessory, you know, that's what you're going to use here. Now, the cool thing is that these are interchangeable. So, you know, it's not like you're really married to one thing. I mean, if you switch them around, you should be fine. But so here's here's the, the, the way it's going to be set up. And you can see I have all these wires. They're here for a reason. And I, I just wanted to kind of show you, you know, so that you guys can get a better idea, as I said. So this right here, this uh, the switch assembly is going to be inside the engine bay. We're going to find a place for it that's going to be adequate. This long ground cable is going to go from this switch assembly right here and uh, it's going to go to our battery okay this cable right here this long cable positive cable uh, is going to be going right here to this terminal right here as you can see there's no way you can miss it it's red and that is going to go to your circuit breaker and it's got a little let's see you have to remove this right here let's go ahead and remove it Remove the little cap. Come on. Let's go ahead and remove that cover for a minute. And as you can see right here, there's one terminal, another terminal. So the longer cable is going to go from, like I said, from the switch assembly all the way to your uh, positive right here to the circuit breaker. And this shorter uh, positive cable. It's going to go from here to your battery. So you got your negative, your positive to the battery, and then we don't stop there. Okay. Then we are going to have this auxiliary, this auxiliary uh, wire right here. This one goes connected to this smaller one right here. Okay. I'm not going to do it. I'm just, you know, kind of showing you. And then from there, it's going to go to this shorter little fuse plug right here. This is going to go to the our vehicles to the GX's uh, fuse box okay and we're gonna find we'll, we'll go ahead and explain to you we're gonna find an adequate place for it you know that'll work so I'm gonna need to uh, bud this uh, little wire right here to the wire that's coming from you know the switch assembly right here uh, now let me show you the cool part this is the neat part this is the whole reason probably why we're doing this okay you have one, one wire. This is going to go right here. Okay, this, uh, how many prongs? It looks like four prong right here. It's going to go there. Okay, and from here, this single wire is going to go into the cap through the firewall. And then we are going to unite it in there with this other plug right here. Just screws in there. All right. And then, of course, ultimately, to our um, switch right here, all right?
Okay guys, we're gonna pick up right where we left off and we are going to start by identifying where we're gonna be placing that switch panel. Well, first of all, we're gonna remove this. I already took the liberty of removing the little tabs here. We're just gonna get rid of this. We're not gonna need this, at least not for my application. Some people would wanna put it right back, but uh, I'm not gonna need it. You have these braces right here. I'm just gonna leave them there. Uh, I have plans to put a, a non-board air uh, compressor later on. So this, I wanna keep this space free, okay? So I think I've identified this area right here, okay, as a potential area. And uh, I kind of use my, I'm using, I'm basing myself by my friend uh, Gabriel, uh, Gabriel's setup. This is the way he did it. He's got a GX460 also. So I think I'm gonna place it right here, the switch panel. And uh, another thing that I need to do is I need to start identifying some of these cables. Uh, the ones, I installed these pod lights myself so I know, you know where they belong. Uh, but then I also have to take care of these lights right here, okay? So these off-road lights, I need to identify the wires because they're gonna go to the switch panel. That's gonna be right here, okay? Uh, this, which is, like I said, the pod lights, this is gonna go into the switch panel as well, okay? And then I'm also going to install this light right here. This is their aux beam light bar looks great it's got multiple modes but i'll go ahead and explain later a little bit more about it later and uh I'm, i have a slim line two front runner slim line two uh roof rack as you can see and it's really easy to put it up there okay but anyway i still have to wire that and hopefully bring the cable yeah and this i will clean up been waiting to clean this up forever this is for my radio right here and we're going to try to clean that up using uh casey highlights universal wire hider that's going to go along this pillar right here on the glass and we're going to be able to hide all those wires bring them in through this little pocket that removes right here okay this little panel and then run our wires into the cabin like i said everything is going to run in here and uh everything is going to be you know set up in this area right here so all of those uh, uh positive and negative cables from those light sources are going to be going straight to that one single panel and then one only one one cable is going to go into the firewall instead of see how you have all these multiple cables here running into the firewall but we want to eliminate that okay we only have want to have one going in there we will however have one one cable that's going to be coming out from the cabin and let me show you the one cable that is going to be coming out of here is going to be this um, cable right here from my little little midland radio right here okay i'm going to cut this off all right and i'm going to send this through the firewall back into back into the the engine bay so i can connect this to that switch panel as well and therefore i will be able to hardwire the radio I'll be able to hardwire the radio and uh, be able to control it with a switch panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the negative terminal. Now that we did that, I'm going to have to start identifying some of these cables from the light sources and start isolating them. Um, as you can tell, some of them have the relays here. And of course, that's what they come with right here. And the fuses and all that good stuff. We're not going to need any of that. All you need is a simple 
direct wire and uh, the positive and negative wire because those are going to go into that channel uh, into those individual channels for that A gang uh, aux beam A gang uh, switch uh, switch panel back inside the cab you know we're going to have a couple of uh, toggle switches right here I had set it up here one controls the the pod lights the other one my off-road lights up in the front I also have this other this other um, lighter plug for my radio but of course I don't want to use this I'm tired of you know having to uh, take up that lighter space with this thing so uh, I want to cut this somewhere right here depends on how much wire I have and I want to send it back into the engine bay uh, through the firewall there's like maybe maybe three feet maybe three feet of space but thank goodness i was able to um get some of this 14 i think it's 14 or 16 gauge wire that i bought and i'm just going to extend this you know solder it and extend it you know make sure that there's enough to get me to the engine bay i bought a hundred foot roll of this 14 gauge wire and uh expecting you know that hey you know there's going to be there's going to be a lot of connecting to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and uh get uh an estimate of how long this wire should be from the cabin all the way into the cab and then i'll cut it right there and then i will just solder it to this one right here all right so all of the tools that i'm going to be using and materials i will have down in the description along along with a very special code so that you guys can enjoy that you know from uh ox beam okay on the products that i'm using today on the switch panel and the light bar as well i identified the link and now i'm going to cut using this right here this is what i found was a lot easier to do so i had this cable this is from the radio and it has this uh two connector switch that goes straight into the unit and uh, then this is connected to this fuse right here we're not going to need this fuse because this is uh, pretty much going to be obsolete since this is going to be connected eventually to that switch panel so this is going to be the ongoing concept today so uh, anything that has to do with relays with extra junk, you know, things connected to the battery. That's the goal here. You know, things that we're going to be able to eliminate by simplifying everything. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut right here. All right, before it. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further just in case. Because who knows, maybe if I want to use this again or whatever, I doubt it. I mean, how many times are you guys one of these guys that, that just, hey, I'm going to use this later on. And you never do, man. Never do. But then again, when you need it, you're like, oh, man, didn't I have that thing? Well, it's going to be buried in some sort of box, obscure box somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. So anyway, we're going to split these right here. Let's go ahead and split these. I'm going to give myself plenty of plenty of wire here. And then what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can tell, but right here, let me see if I'm doing it right. I'm going to give myself plenty of space here to, to remove this. And now we have these exposed wires right here, as you can see. Well, I'm doing a terrible job there. But uh, let me see here now. Let me take care of this one. Okay. Get rid of this one as well. So I don't know if I'm just. There you go. I'm gonna twist this best as I can. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a uh, long wire. So now 
I'm going to cut some off of this one as well. So now that I have these exposed, all right, both wires, what I'm going to do is give it a go with these connectors, okay? There's solder seal butt connectors, all right? Blue ones are for the 14 to 16 gauge, which should work with what I'm using right now. If they don't seal, I'm still going to use, you know, uh, some heat shrink pre-cut heat shrink so let me tell you uh, the cool thing about these you know there's a little bit of solder possibly a little flux in there in the center one and then you have these little uh, sealing glue type of coatings right here so the goal is to get our wires right in the center and then you know use a heat gun or you can also use you know, like a cigar lighter or some sort of torch, butane torch or something like that. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the heat gun. I went ahead and I shortened them a little bit so that they fit in here. As you can tell, I already slipped the heat shrink. And it's probably overkill, you know. I mean, these butt connectors already have the heat shrink and all that good stuff. But I just went ahead and added an extra layer there just in case. And then... I'm gonna have this uh, solder, you know, butt connector right here. It's gonna slip over this area, but first I need to merge these two right here. And let me see if I can go ahead and twist them together. I've seen some people fan out the strands and then mash them together, but I think I'm just gonna go this route okay and let's do one first let's see how it goes all right so i'm going to slip let's slip this right over it okay and uh try to separate this right here Seems to be working nicely. Tightening up. Let's take a look at that. Looks like it's nice and tight. You can see the solder there. Now, this is not a substitute for soldering. I don't think anything's going to beat soldering, um, but this is a time saver, in my opinion. So now I'm putting the heat shrink over it and giving it that extra layer of protection, keeping it nice and tight. Now that we eliminated the radio wire, we're going to remove this right here. Okay, guys, once you, you know, kind of get, get it a little loose like that, you know, these things can come out easy. You just put a little pressure from behind, and they pop out like this, okay? Now, my whole goal is these two that I had plugged in here, I need to go ahead and remove these and hopefully be able to replace these, um... Uh, these little covers I don't know what I did with the originals uh, so I'm gonna have to look for them or just get some sort of replacement or otherwise it's just gonna be a hole right there I'm gonna remove some of these uh, zip ties and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach the radios uh, power uh, wire and connect it to one of these wires so that I can go ahead and just yank it out through there and not have to stress about bringing it back in. Go 
what I'm going to do now, like I said, is I'm going to tape these wires together. This is going to be the wire from the radio that I soldered a little while ago. And then this is going to be the pod light wires that were in the rocker panel or rocker switch. So I'm just going to tape them together and then I'm going to yank this through the same hole. Okay. I'm ready to pull these wires that are coming from out there. Just like this. There you are. You see that? That's what we just uh, taped. We're going to go pull it all out. Not completely, but just enough. If you have a bunch of stuff coming in and you don't know what, you know, what this is and what that is, you can't identify it. Would be a good idea to put a little tape on it or a little label and then call it, hey, this is the, you know, the off-road lights, this is a, my light bar, this is my pod lights, whatever the case is. Now that we've eliminated, we already identified, we have our cables, all our sources, all our light sources have been isolated for the exception of the light bar, of course, because we want to connect the existing sources already to this and then everything else is just pretty much falling into place i had identified an area here you know it, it was suggested by my buddy um gabriel um and so i don't know you see this ground wire right here this ground bolt i can go ahead and uh dislodge this and then as i told you also at the beginning you know there's different brackets that it comes with and it has different settings so i don't know if i should put it at the bottom one or at the top one but i'm going to experiment with it i'm only going to do one side so i can test it out to see how the hood closes and you know all that good stuff so let's go ahead and remove that bolt i went ahead and i made a little um mark with a marker you know and that is going to be where i'm going to drill just a small little hole just to get it started just enough so i can put my self-tapping screws in there and then we're going to secure the switch assembly onto the bracket We are going to try to see if we can bolt this down to this little tray. Y'all don't know how tough it is for, well, maybe you do understand, you know, if you guys are like me, you know, you're not the biggest DIY guys, or at least you're realistic with yourself, you know, or maybe you're just hard on yourselves and uh, you realize that you're not really really that good at DIY stuff man I am flirting with disaster here this thing is about to and all why because I don't have the right tools with me oh there you go machine screws cooperated easily these are the machine screws that I'm using. All the hardware, guys, uh, all the hardware comes um, with, uh, they provide it. Oxbeam provides everything that you'll need. However, you know, if, if you do need to make some special modifications because of your particular ride or, or maybe the way you want to set it up, then you will have to do what I did, which is, you know, maybe buy a couple of self-tapping screws you know, if you want to go that route. There's so many different ways to to mount this. Like I said, this is what I feel works for me. I'll tighten it up a little later, but we should have access to this. Opens up, there you are. Use all the channels, all the fuses. And if you remember from earlier in the video, you know, we have our our uh, wiring set up right here. Well, I need to connect these things back to the battery, the terminals back to the battery. Need to affix this 
here somewhere and I'll need to figure it out. At this point, what I've done is before I completely connect this thing back to normal, um, I went ahead and I routed, as you can see, there's an extra wire right here. So this cable right here is the magical cable. This one with the four prongs, this is the one that will, the one single wire that's gonna go into the cabin and connect with the actual uh, switch panel up there. And here we have, you know, the ground, you know, we have the um, uh, auxiliary wire right here, the accessory wire, the, um, you know, positive uh, cable that eventually is gonna get to the battery. Uh, right now it's right here connected to the circuit breaker and from the circuit breaker it's going to go to the battery but we're not going to connect that yet first we're going to do the negative cable all right and you can see it right here i went ahead and i routed it the best i could still need to have some sort of access to this cable box and i'll show you why uh we're not finished with that one yet so let's go ahead and uh put this here that so now let's go ahead and zip tie this right here now the cool thing is you know Oxbeam they will send you like I said they'll send you hardware they even, they even send you these zip ties so just in case maybe save you a trip to the trip to the part store auto part store you don't have to worry about that Let's go ahead and tighten these up here just to keep them out of the way from the other light sources that we are going to be installing in a little bit. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you have this accessory wire that's coming out from your switch panel assembly and this thing has to make its way into one of these fuses over here okay um they provide you with this little piggyback thingy i don't even know it's a connector but it comes with a five uh five amp fuse but uh remember that they send you they provide you with extra fuses right here and even a little clip to remove the fuses so this is what I did, and I learned this from GX Bob. You know, you go in here, I don't know if you can catch it, but you see this 15 amp right here, this fuse. Let's see if I can remove it with this. I might not be able to. Oh, there you go. There you go, it works. It was just user error. So this is what he mentions. You know, these, the Lexus fuses are so small, okay? So you can't use this to piggyback on this thing right here, but it is a 15 amp fuse. And thankfully, Oxbeam provides you with a 15 amp fuse as an extra. So I already have it here. So this connector right here is supposed to control your uh, rear windshield wiper, okay? So in order for you to continue to use it and be able to use this properly, you know, all you have to do is go ahead and piggyback it over there and then we're gonna do the attachment now that we've done that um, I am going to go ahead and measure this thing and I am going to see just use enough cable just have enough cable so that it can reach in here so I think right about here is gonna be good enough so let me go ahead and measure it up hopefully i don't screw this up remember guys i've never done this okay never done this a lot of these tools that i have you know were just there or i bought them specifically for this because well i really wanted to do it on my own now right there so this these things have been really really handy for me because like i said i'm a total noob total noob and i don't know what the heck i'm doing i'm just 
you know, like I said, you know, knowledge is power and at least whatever, <laughs> whatever I've learned from my fellow YouTube community and uh, friends out there. Let me see here. So what I saw, what he did was, I'm talking about GX Bob, he goes ahead and he bends this in half to create a little bit more girth, right? And then we'll go ahead and put this in here into this barrel. All right, it's a little metal barrel there. Now let's start crushing this thing. As tight as I can. Come on. Uh. Who said that? We're going to go ahead and connect it here. It's going to be like this. Did I, did I screw it up? Connect it like so. But now you're gonna notice that that this thing, there is no notch for this, so we're gonna have to create a little notch here to make it happen. So probably around here, this corner, make it a little more ample. Is all right. There you go. And to my satisfaction, we have the connector here. We have the wires coming out of here. We have it connected. The only thing we don't have is the connector, you know, the positive connector going to the battery. But I think I'm going to kind of have this right here. I still have to, you know, secure these wires right here. That's not a big deal. But uh, let's go ahead and remove this cover, transparent cover. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw this in to the top of this. Now we are going to run this cable, the cable that goes to our switch panel in the dash. We're going to run it through this area right here. I'm sure you all know by now. I'm going to run it through that firewall back there. Okay. Let's see how we can set this up. By the way, guys, it's it's been really, really tough. Not just on me, but on the on the cameras. The heat is. I mean, the cameras don't like the heat, especially GoPros, man. I mean, you think they make them a little bit more resistant to that, but nope. They are pretty weak. It's funny because this is kind of be a little unique because I do have one cable, as you all recall, coming out. Okay coming from the from uh, the cabin out here because this is the one that's going to connect from the radio uh, over to the assembly out here. There's already a rock here. So I can just go ahead and tie wrap this thing right here. There's a way to put it right here. I'm going to route this Cable, cable for the radio right here behind. Okay, guys, I just got these cables out of the way. Just kind of free up some space down there. 
Let me see if I can send this cable through the firewall. This is the main cable, obviously. Let's see if that helps. I gotta be real careful not to damage the, the cable. I think it's in. That's what she said. Okay, let's go take a look in there. See if they made it through. Well, well, well. Look who caught a break. Did make it across. Hopefully, my camera is working. Like I said, the heat is so bad. Cameras want to quit. I want to quit. But no, I'm already committed. I'm gonna do this. So we are going to temporarily connect the switch panel to that uh, wire that we sent through, that one and only magical wire, the simple wire. So now it has this little cap right here. You know, you're gonna drive it all the way in. Then uh, carefully, without screwing up these plastic threads, go ahead and secure it. Remember, we're not connected yet. This is just temporary because we are going to be connecting. We're going to be connecting our lights. So this is how messed up things are. Look at how sunny it is. But it's extremely hot. But of course, I have to catch that one cloud that's going to dump rain on my parade. One cloud. Come on, man. No. How? How? How is this happening? Okay, my friends, so now we are gonna sort out the fuse situation. So for channel one, I'm gonna go with a 25 amp fuse to accommodate the off-road lights. Then on channel two, that's gonna be my ditch lights. That's a 15, okay? And then um, it's gonna be the awesome Oxbeam uh, LED light bar that is facing the driver's side. That's a 30, okay? And then I'm gonna add two more lights, one chase lights for the back and some for the driver's side, but that's gonna be another video. And uh, I got those sorted out as well. Then I have my six, and seventh channel those two are just going to be blank and the eighth i'm going to reserve with a five amp and that is going to be for my radio so i went ahead and i got a phillips screwdriver because as you can see right here you have the negative and you have the positive obviously these uh labels are here are just that labels at this point because we had to adjust the fuses so go ahead and ignore these as long as we know that the fuses correspond to whatever light source we're going to be um, adding. So opening these up. We're going to do one at a time, okay? So the first one we're going to take care of is going to be the off-road lights up in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just open up enough, just a little bit. And uh, maybe a little bit more. And maybe a little bit more. Remember guys, I'm new to this, so I'm really just giving it a good old try here. All right, okay. So there it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this thing right here. Just going to tighten it up. Now we're going to move on to the positive. Come on. We are yet. All right. 
we're just gonna keep on doing this with all of them okay so I don't want to bore you guys in watching the exact same thing so just know negative positive negative positive corresponding fuses and choose the channel remember the channels that you want okay so that is going to be the existing lights right now we still need to connect the we need to run run wires uh run the wiring for the aux beam led light bar yeah i'm a little nervous uh here you go so i was able to set up the switch assembly got everything connected got the circuit breaker got everything connected over here you know it's pretty clean so now now it's the moment of truth man so let me get my keys let me see man let me see what's gonna happen here i'm a little scared remember that we have not finalized this this is just to test it out and tomorrow tomorrow i guess i'll continue with the project um time got away from me it was a tough day with the gopros so here goes nothing let me turn this on well that's a bad sign oh actually that's what it does i forget that um I forget that every time you disconnect the battery, you're going to turn it back on, it does this. We should be fine now. Let's do this. <gasps> oh, this is already on. So let's give it a try. Okay. Okay. The truck started. Let's go take a look. Under the bonnet, under the hood. I don't hear anything sparking yet. Uh, seems to be okay. Close this up. I didn't leave any stuff here, any extra tools. Okay, we're gonna test these out. We're gonna test these out. And we're gonna test the radio as well. So if you guys remember, you guys remember, channel one is supposed to be the off-road lights up in the front. So, boom, let's go check. Absolutely, absolutely. There we are, there we are, they're working. Okay, now, Let's go with the pod lights. Y'all recall that was number two. Boom. Hooray. They both work. That's a good sign. All right. Now, the last one was the radio over here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. How about them apples? Huh? Ah, oh, okay. Now I can shut it down because tomorrow we're going to continue with this awesome ox beam LED light bar that they sent me along with that switch panel. And this, I'm looking forward to this one. It's, it's again, a challenge. It's going to be a challenge because... I'm gonna see how I can route, it's not, it's not connected yet, but I need to route this and bring it down. I'm gonna bring it down, down this pillar right here, okay? And get it into the switch panel assembly. And then we can go ahead and test all of this goodness again. Oh, I'm so happy, man. 
Now I can go enjoy dinner, a shower, hang out with my honey for a little bit, and because uh, I deserve it. Okay, here we are again. Next day, we're gonna continue with the project. So what I wanted to do is, I wanted to, you all recall, you, uh, we did a, we did that little, we did that little um, testing yesterday and it went well. So now I'm going to remove this and I'm gonna prep it, you know, to put some stickers on it. And then I'm gonna find a mount mounting place. I think I'm gonna go with uh, GX Bob's idea. And uh, what he did, he just went ahead and drilled it to this area right here, okay? So it would be sort of like this, I would imagine. And uh, I think this would be a great place. It's right at the line of sight and it'll be easy to access. And um, most importantly, what he mentioned was uh, this little piece right here is replaceable as you can see. And so if somebody would be, be to be a set, let's say, I'm never gonna sell Sandy Man. I mean, unless something devastating happens and I would have to get rid of her or, you know, God forbid, you know, but if somebody wanted to replace it and they don't want this crap on it, they can always easily replace this little section right here. Okay, so the reason I decided to go with this next step right now is because, you know, I have this thing before I connect it to or I attach it to the little bracket that uh, Oxbeam provided us with. I, I think I have better control of it right here, you know, to clean it up and then to go ahead and add my little stickers to the little buttons right here. You know, so I think I would have better control having it here on my work table and uh, because we need to clean it up with some alcohol, okay? And, uh, and then just make sure that it's nice and dry and clean so the adhesive would go on there and stay there for a long, long time. So let's get to work on that. As you may recall, um, channel one is gonna be my main front lights and they give you so many options here uh, for whatever you prefer to call it. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with regular front right here. Fit it here. As nicely as possible. Okay. And that was channel two. Right here. On channel three, we're gonna have my driver side, okay? That's gonna be my driver side work light, which is that LED light bar provided to me by Oxbeam. Uh, let's see, let's see. What can we find here for the left, the driver side? I mean, they have this arrow for the left. I guess that's pretty clear. Yeah, I think I'll just go with a left arrow. I don't know what I'm gonna put in these two right here, okay? But I do know, so I'm gonna leave them blank for now, but I do know that I have my radio so I got my radio right here. And Oxbeam, if you're watching, if you think I could use whatever you want to think I could use for these two, you know, go ahead and contact it, me, contact me and uh, we'll see what we can install. As I told you, Oxbeam will provide you with the hardware that you need. And uh, I know it's here somewhere, but they will even provide you with a Allen wrench tool, okay? So that you can adjust, well, it's somewhere around here. You can see I have everything scattered around, just like my brain. But anyway, so they'll provide you with these little machine screws so that you can attach the switch panel to the bracket itself. Okay, friends, so I decided to remove, I removed the 
the switch panel uh, and the brace that's att attached to it from the side so I can have a uh, better uh, access to these two mounting uh, screw holes right here. And I want to keep it in this little panel right here. So I'm going to try to hug it all the way to the corner, see if that's acceptable, and then I'm going to mark it. All right. Now, as GX Bob said, you still have plenty of ventilation coming out of there. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. So let's go ahead and mark it. Go ahead and tighten it up, but with a hand screwdriver now. Okay, friends, so as you can see, here we have that one single cable that came from our uh, switch assembly unit in the engine bay that one cable that magic remember we had these rocker panels over here you know we just have this one got to connect it over here to our actual switch panel and in order to do that obviously we don't want to leave it like this so you know let's go ahead and get to work got this little panel removal here and the cool thing is that all of this stuff just pretty much pops out. Just gotta find the pressure points, I guess. Oh, that's what it was. It was just getting stuck back here. So remove this little panel right here. And then I'm gonna make some space here. Just opening it up ever so slightly, make enough space. So that we can run, we can run our cable through here. All right. So I'm going to try to run it from here. Stuff it in here as we can without causing any damage. I didn't realize I was blocking the whole shot over here. My apologies. Let's see if we can get this GoPro pointing a little bit better. Hopefully it is. Let's see if we can make some space here. Oopsies. All right. Let's bring it in more space here for our cable and we're gonna stuff it back in like so try to bring in the slack and let's go ahead and reconnect it here remember the little notches got to make sure that those notches are lined up you can see it right there boom and be mindful of these plastic threads. And secure it in here. And there's plenty of space here to where you can, you know, put your, you can put your, your panel back in there. Okay. Well, that's the best I'm going to do right there. But, you know what? I like it. Right here. Okay guys, so now that we've installed the Oxbeam switch panel, uh, Oxbeam, I said, hey, you know, I mean, I'm gonna connect these things, but wouldn't it be nice to have yet one more thing connected? Uh, and uh, this is what they sent me, a 12 inch, LED light bar beautiful right here well made man waterproof the whole works uh, it's 300 watts 
300 watts. It is it produces white and amber uh, light, and I'll tell you, it's got multi-function. So it can go strobe. You can do all amber. You can do all white. You know, different uh, different types of modes that it, it'll give you, like six of them. Uh, however, when you're using this with the switch panel that Oxbeam provides. You know, I don't think I don't think you can switch between those modes. OK, so whatever mode you had at one point, you know, that's the point, uh, you know, whenever whatever it's set at, that's what it's that's what it's going to produce. OK, so what I did was I went ahead and, uh, you know, tested it out first, connected it directly to the battery, and then I was able to find the mode that I wanted and I left it at that mode hoping that when I connect it it's gonna always produce that but unfortunately I cannot use I don't believe that I can use the features that the LED light bar you know comes with not all of them I have to stick with one of them you know so if you are really trying to buy this because you want to use different modes and whatnot then you, you, you're probably going to have to rig it up the old fashioned way, you know, and you're going to have to have like it's so it's going to have to have its own separate switch so that you can toggle between modes. All right. And it does have a bunch of awesome modes, you know, the, the strobe light and all this other other stuff, uh, all these other awesome features. If that's what you want, if that's what you need, you know, by all means, you know, go ahead and wire it independently don't wire it through the switch panel so at this point i've never done this man I, I i just went ahead and i and i put it up here um it's got they give you the hardware and they give you the brackets different types of brackets different type you know all the hardware that you might need you know but i have a front runner slimline 2 um rack and so I had to fit it the way it was uh, for my application, okay? You know, to make minimal changes, no drilling, no anything. Uh, these things slide back and forth, okay? So if the hole was over here, you could definitely move it further this way or this way or wherever you need to move it. No problem there. Let's go ahead and, and start figuring out where we're gonna run the cable Okay, we're gonna run the wiring, you know, and uh, how we're gonna get it into the switch panel in the engine bay. So this is the wire harness that Oxbeam included with that uh, LED light bar. And let's open it up. It's supposed to be about 10 feet. Now, this is what I was talking about. If you're going to, if you really want that, those features, this is what it gives you, okay? this right here you have the switch you have the on and off that's all i'm going to be able to do with that switch panel and then it's got the modes okay so i i'm not going to be able to use the modes according to what i've been told you know that's not going to be uh, an option for me but you know if this is what you all want you're going to have to leave it you know, it's got a little backing tape in the back you're going to have to do this and keep this original one if that's what you're going to need my application I'm not gonna need that so what does that mean it means that I am going to cut all of these things that I don't need okay that includes the fuse and, and the relay so I just want to keep it simple and I just want to use you know so I don't need the switch I don't need that little boat switch I don't need the fuse I don't need the relay I just need the main cable okay this is what I need and I'm going to use as much as I can of the original cable all right these are the connectors that it comes with I'm not going to use these I'm going to use my own connectors and uh, you know it has three it has three wires but I'm not going to use this yellow one so I'm going to delete this one right here and I'm just going to focus on the positive and the negative and I'm going to send this down as far as I can from the roof rack find a good place 
to route it through and then I'm gonna bring it down the A pillar and then uh, eventually all the way down to the aux beam switch panel assembly so let's find a good place to cut it and let's get these wires prepped okay cut it right here this would have been the mode wire and obviously I have no use for it I'm just gonna cancel it out I don't think I have to do this but you know just in case Okay guys, I'm up here on the roof rack and I hope that you can take a look at this just fine. But these wires are the ones that are coming from Oxbeam, uh, Oxbeam's uh, light bar. And uh, I still need to, this is probably gonna be more important, you know, to go ahead and put some sort of heat shrink on this thing. But it doesn't have the same connectors as uh, the one on the wiring harness. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to want to, you know, maybe shorten these out a little bit, cut them a little bit to where I can go ahead and merge them with these. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with those solder butt uh, connectors and then heat shrink on top of it. And I think that's gonna work out just fine. The other cool thing is this, let me show you. There's plenty, plenty of wire plenty of wire to go all the way down at least to get me into the engine bay and um, that is pretty cool I don't know if it's gonna make it all the way maybe maybe it will I don't know and uh, also I'm probably I'm gonna see if I can I'm gonna see if I can you know put it through this uh, little channel right here Maybe that'll protect it a little bit. And then, I don't know, have it go down. I still have to see, I still have to see how it's gonna work out. But I need to figure this out first. This is the, these are the wires that are coming from the, the lamp. And this is gonna be the wiring uh, harness that's gonna be heading over to the assembly. And, uh, so first, let's go ahead and eliminate this yellow, the mode. Now, normally I'd be doing using this with a heat gun. Uh, you see how it smoked a little bit? I'd be careful with that. Solder butt connector first. All right. We're going to slip this right on top of the wire. Make sure that the solder is right there. All right, separate these. Now we're going to break out the little lighter here. Just be careful not to go a little too crazy with the heat. So, that little blue goo is going to secure it nicely. Now, let's focus up that solder. So, there we go. That's that. Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to go ahead and jam this through here. See the channels that I was talking about? And I'm going to jam it over here as well. But before I do that, I'm going to obviously, you know, uh, wrap this up with some tape. And uh, but you know what? I'm even wondering if I should, I should have a big enough, a big enough, because this has me a little concerned. Some heat shrink that'll cover all of this. I'm sure I have something big enough. But I had some of this heat shrink tubing laying around uh, looks like it's just makes it over it I don't know if it'll work but I'm gonna give it a try if 
Okay, so it made it all the way, just barely snug, very snug. So, okay, I'm happy with this. Do the ends first. This is what I'm coming up with. Hopefully this will work, but I have this channel. It's like a little T rubber or whatever you want to call it, but it fits perfectly. It's from Front Runner, and it fits perfectly in these channels, you know, because what I'm looking for is to keep this secure. Now, obviously, I can't run this cable beneath this because the bracket those whole those uh screws go all the way down so i can't do that but maybe with this i can cut it right about here let's cut it right here and let's see if we can fit this in this groove yeah that works out all right so that looks pretty neat Instead of using um, uh, instead of using tie wraps, I can just use this right here, and that's going to secure it nicely. All right, over here, as you can tell, we have a longer stretch, and uh, you see the, the the connector part. If I ever have ac need access or whatever, or it gets you know screwed over, I'll have access to it right here. It is protected. I think that's good enough, and. Um, but let's see if we can do something from this area to this area over here. The rest of the cable, I'm thinking of sending it under, under the roof rack. I found this other channel right here where it continues. So I'm just going to drive it through here. I think it's going to work out a little bit better. See right here? Check this out. Looks like it's fitting just fine. I'm going to have to cut it right about here, right before the end. Let's see if we can trim it right about here. And voila, man, isn't this neat? That is pretty cool. All right, that worked out perfectly. Nice and secure, I like it. Okay, so we connected the LED light bar and now we ran the cable, as you can see. Never mind that antenna. I'm going to be working on something. I have plans for that. It's not going to be there forever. It's a temporary thing. But uh, we're running the cable from the roof rack. And then I'm kind of tucking it in to this channel right here. Okay. It's like barely makes it in there. And then we're going to fit it in. I already loosened this up, but I'm going to fit it in through here and into... I'm going to loosen this up, fit it in to the engine bay. But I wanted to show you another thing that I have here and take a look at this. This is a universal wire hider. It's a universal wire hider and uh, I'm not going to put it on yet. I have plans to, I don't know if it's going to go this way or the other way around, but I'm going to place this thing along this wire. It goes in through here, all right? And then as you can see it, it's right there. It shouldn't be pinched. It's not gonna be pinched by this. At least I don't think so. And then, <laughs> and then it's gonna go in through here. It's got a little wrap right here, as you can see. And then it follows the other cables that are eventually gonna go into this thing right here. Now, I am blessed, man, because Check it out. Um, so check it out. I got plenty, plenty of wire from Oxbeam. 
That was pretty neat. Okay, friends, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to measure this cable, remove this, and as you all recall, we had already checked, we had already checked the fuse, and uh, so this one is gonna match up, it's a 30 for that uh, 300 watt light bar. So we already have it here. That's gonna be channel number three. It's already labeled, the whole works. All we have to do at this point is pretty much just measure it, okay? All right. So, according to my calculations, this should be working. Ow! Okay, never mind that part. Fired up Sandy over here, and uh, we got switch panel right here, and I already tested these. So this is my driver's side. Let's go ahead and punch it. There it is. Turn it off and turn it on. That's wonderful, man. That is awesome. That is so cool. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Check this out. With this, what I decided to do is, uh, and I'll show you in a little bit, you know, but you can download the app, okay? It comes with an app. You can download it, and from there, it's so easy to change the colors of, uh, of your switch panel, all right? You can just easily switch the colors there and, uh, you know, the brightness. Now, I try to match the color here to the color of my dashboard the best I could, and so that's pretty neat, but check this out. So there's there's the uh, off-road lights. There's gonna be the pod lights. And there's that awesome aux beam. Look at that, man. That's the LED light bar. Isn't that crazy? So much light. Oh, that's that's beautiful. So now we're gonna go on my passenger side lights very nice that's a canal guys that's a canal you can see all the way over there and of course the rear lights oof man that is so awesome so bright and uh, of course my radio right here there you go anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and links in the description Holler at me if you got any questions and uh, y'all take care.